Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, let's take a look at the U Fiber Local G Point CPE from Ubiquiti, and I will be showing you the advanced configuration with this device, such as serial number change and then MAC address, and also some other uh, features such as the SLID and something like that. Alright, so Ubiquiti make two similar products. One is the U-Fiber Local and the other one is the U-Fiber Nano. So first, let's unbox the device and then I will tell you what is the difference. So inside the box, you will have a U-Fiber Local. So this is it. You have the device and then this is the warm out kit. Alright. So let me show you. So this is my current device. All right. So the back and for the connectors, we have a pond connector. This is a SCAPC and then a gigabit Ethernet port. You also have a micro USB connector to power on the device. Beside the micro B power, you can also power the device with a 24 volt passive PoE adapter. All right, so very simple. On the top side, you will have uh, some indicators only. And after that, you will also have an official power adapter. So let me just take it out. So this is the 5 volt. Let me see. So this is a 5 volt 1M power adapter from Ubiquiti, as you can see. Lastly, we will have some screws and mounting gear and a quick star guide. All right, so this is where you scan the QR code and get all the instruction. Let me put aside the compactivity first and then let's take a look at this one. So this is the U-Fiber logo and for the u fiber nano you will have an led indicator like a text indicators of the download the upload as well as the signal strain but for the u fiber local you don't have that they only led indicators of the signal all right and with the u fiber nano you cannot power on with poe so they only micro b to power on okay all right, so now let's take a look at the compactivity of the device. So the U-Fiber Local and the U-Fiber Nano are designed to use with the Ubiquiti OLT, which is the optical light terminals. However, it's the compatible with some OLT from other vendors, such as the Huawei MA5608T, the Huawei the Fiber Home, and ZTE. Okay, so I want to tell you that this device is not compatible with all types of OLT or it is not compatible with all the ISP in the world. So if you want to purchase this one to replace your ISP provided device such as this one, then you need to take a look and understand like what is your ISP, what is the OLT and how is the connector, okay? So for example, in this case, I have uh, this ONT, we have SCAPC connector, which is already much the connector here. But I will need to check with the ISP technician team and verify if they're using the compatible OLT or not before proceed to buy this one. So just a warning before you purchase this one, okay? But if you use this for Ubiquiti OLT, then there should be no problem. All right, so now we will connect everything together, power on the device, and then we are going to factory reset this U-Fiber local to proceed with the configuration. All right, so here is the fiber cable. Let's put it down like this. And gently remove the fiber cable or else we will break it. All right, so here is how it is connected. All right, very good. And next, let's connect the power cable. And very good, we already have the power right here. Now I will connect the Ethernet cable from my PC 
to the UFiber local to configure it. All right, so now we start to see some blinking on this one and it tells us that there is something wrong with the fiber connection. So either the device is not properly configured or uh, the authorization is failed. So now we start to see some blinking LED right here. So this is the indicator for the Ethernet and these are the indicator for the G point. So right here, I can see that everything is on a steady light so sometimes it indicate a working fiber connection and a authenticate status is successful however for some OLT this will not properly indicate so before we proceed with everything you can reset the device by press and hold the reset button down below for 5 or 10 seconds and then the ubiquity U fiber local will be reset and after that we can proceed with the configuration so now let's go back to the device and we will proceed to configure it if you are new to the configuration it is good to have a check at the U fiber local uh, user manual as well as this U fiber G point supported touch party OLT to know how to configure it all right, so now let me go to the network and internet settings. Go to adapter option. The U fiber locals or U fiber nano is available at 192.168.1.1. And in order to reach it, I need to set a static IPv4. So all you need to do is right click on the network icon, go to network and internet setting, change adapter option, right click on your internet adapter property. And then set an IPv4 at red to 192.168.1.10 for example. And here make sure you select the correct gateway, which is the 1.1. So now let's go back to the browser and go to 192.168.1.1. And let's wait for the device. So there is something wrong. So let me try to ping it. We do have the response, but there's something wrong with the web UI. So perhaps there is no HTTP. Now let's open a private tab and go to 192.168.1.1. And here we are, we are at the U Fiber login page. The default login will be UBNT and the password is UBNT as well. And very good, we are inside the web interface so right here I can see the connection state which is connected and I can see the TX as well as RX power and here this is the status for the Ethernet port okay so it's very simple I have the device models the device region the hardware version and also the several number so you may see it's weird that I have a very different serial number Actually, I have given an SVN tune to change the serial number to something else. That's why you see it like it, but no worry. Later on, I will show you how to do that. So here we have the firmware version, the release time, CPUs, and memory. And then on the settings, we have the network configuration by default with a bridge, but you can configure it at a router. So here on the GPON, you have four profile. Profile number one is for the ubiquity OLT. Profile number two is for Huawei OLT. And here you can configure the logical ID, which is the serial numbers and the logical password if it has, and also the POAM password. And you can also change the serial number prefix to Huawei HWTC if you need. Profile number three, I'm not remember, but I believe it should be for, let me take a look. For profile number three, let me see. Profile number three is for Fiber Home. And profile number four is for ZTE OLT. However, from what you can see, we have a very limitation. We have very limit of controls on the U Fiber Web UI. That's why I will have a second part, all right? 
So for service, we have a web server. We can enable or disable the Azure Edge or Telnet or Divine Discovery. You can also change the web server port. And for system, we have the device model, the name, the firmware. We can upload the firmware to a new one here, change the username and passwords, and like reboot or factory reset or download support. Okay. So before we move on, let's talk a little bit about the GPON. So if you are using OLT from Ubiquiti, then basically you just plug and play. Then no need to configure anything on the U Fiber local. If you're using Huawei OLT, you need to specify the correct information that is used by your ISP. For example, we need a serial number, logical password if you have, and also the POAM passwords, and also the serial number if you need to change and press save and apply. Okay. Provider number three is for Fiber Home, and I have yet to use it, so I cannot give much advice. And provider number four is for ZTE, but these are very basic configuration of ZTE, so you just need to fill in the information that is required by your ISP. The laptop is a device detail. We can see the interface status and how many devices connected, as well as the root and ARP table. And lastly, on the log, we can see uh, the log, and this is actually the DMS message if you connect to the router the at that age. All right, so a lot of messages going on. All right, so that is one thing about uh, the web UI. So this is a very simple connection. And next, the main reasons I made this video is so I want to introduce you to a tool called UFiber Configurator. So with UFiber Configurator, you can configure a lot of things. All right, so you can change. Let me see. You can change the SLID or PLOAM password. You can change the vendors, which is the usually the first four digits of your serial numbers and you can also change the serial number as well as the MAC address or also the version. Okay, so a lot of things you can do with the UFiber Configurator. So in order to download it, let's go to the release button right here. All right, so I have no network connection, so I need to get back to Wi-Fi. Refresh. All right, so the UFiber Configurator is available on Linux, Mac OS and Windows. So for my case, it is window, so I just need to get it. All right, so now let's open the folder. So after download, you will have a zip file. So right click and then hit extract file here. So after extract, you will have a file with U Fiber Configurator window, but you cannot open it right away. You need to rename it, maybe window tools and then a zip file and after that you extract this zip file again so after extract you will have a wins x64 directory and this is the u fiber application now we will proceed with an example so in this case let's say i have a zte olt and i have my ont it is zte app 670y so here is my device serial numbers and here is my mac address all right, so let me put the information down below. So in this serial number, let's say this is the serial number. So you will have the first four digits set T E G. So this will be the pawn vendors or the hardware vendor, which is Z T E network. And then this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight number will be the serial number. All right. So this will be your main information and for the MAC address. So this is an one MAC address. So we are going to configure this one with the U Fiber locals and I will show you the step by step. So right here I add my download directory and I need to navigate to the Firefox directory, which is downloads and then slash Firefox and then it will be let me see 
win 64.x64 okay so it will be win 64.x64 and in here i have the u fiber configurator dot axa so in order to change it let me take a look at the command so you need to specify the host and if you are using the default one you don't need to specify that all right so this is the slid or ploam password so first we are going to have a command like this vendor so it will be zdeg and then followed by the serial number and it will be this serial number okay and then if you want to change the mac address it will be mac and you need to put all the mac array together so it will be something like this okay so c0 b1 all right okay so now let's try and configure it so here is the u fiber configurator just axe and then we will change the vendor to zteg the serial number to C A F A A A B four and the map array to this one. So let's hit enter and let's wait for it. All right, very good. So here we can see some of the information. So we can see the message that the information had been applied to the device and we just need to reboot for the chain to take effect so as you can see we have the ball id at default right here we have changed the mac address of the g point to c0b101 uh, which is the one i have told you right here and then we have changed the g point vendor to this one and the serial number to this one and now we can actually add an age to the device so 192.168.1.1 and then we can just reboot the device and after that let's verify if the chain take effect all right so here is the u fiber local edit age and basically we just need to type reboot or beside this reboot command you can go to the web dashboard and press the reboot right here on the settings and system reboot all right so i trade our device is restarting so let's wait for it and with the u fiber configurator you don't need to touch the zte profile anymore because you are doing everything manually all right so it's look like the device is ready and let's go to the web browsers at 192.168.1.1 and let's log in all right so we can see that the serial number has been changed to zteg and followed by the serial number and you can see that the g points or the fiber connection if i have any problem because i have changed it to someone which is not the correct information so beside the serial number and the vendor, which combine together in the string, you can also change the SLID or the PLOIM password on the U5 local by specify this string or this line. So you may ask me what I should do next after successfully configure the U5 and I got a working GPON or fiber authentication. Well, the next step you will need is a router. This can be an X router X or it can be a nano pies or any router. And then you need to connect one of the port of this router to the gigabit internet port right here. And then you need to set up PPoE or GSCP client or something on your router in order to set up your internet connection. So this will be all for my tutorials and I hope it will be useful for you Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.